Oh. Oh, that was bad. Aloha, welcome to this week's video. So this week I'm going to be starting a Nifu Oti. Um, I actually started this about a week and a half ago, actually. <laughs> so the Nifu Oti is the Samoan uh, war club. And it's also used in Fire Knife. So if you ever watched Fire Knife uh, competitions, the Nifu Oti is what they use for there. The general design of the Nifu Oti, you can kind of see a picture of it on my cell phone there. It has a long handle. And then the club is more of a blade shape, and on the back side it has an angled point, or rather a curve. And then on the front side it's either a blade or a row of wooden teeth. Uh, I've made a nifoti in the past, but I kind of didn't follow traditional styles. I made it more of a combination piece between Hawaiian styles and uh, the Samoan styles. But I wanted to make a little bit more traditional looking piece. Um, one thing though that I was very nervous about is I wanted to make the teeth, the wooden teeth, and I've actually never done that style of pattern before. So this is going to be actually a pretty big challenge for me. I have no idea the best way to carve it in, I just know that I haven't done it before. So the first step that I'm making is I'm just cutting in and marking out my design. Um, I've already cut the basic shape on the bandsaw, and now I'm just matching this triangle pattern on both sides. Uh, so I drew the triangle pattern on one side, and then just drew across the top so I could match it on the other side. Um, I had no idea uh, what process flow I was going to use to cut this in. Um, my original thought was that I would be able to cut most of it out with my angle grinder. It kind of worked. I was able to get the teeth down to a kind of to a a general shape, but it was nowhere close to where I really needed to. That and the teeth aren't angled in the correct pattern, so I need the ridge of the tooth to be perpendicular to the blade of the body, and right now the ridge is parallel to the blade, so I have to fix that. Um, but I have a lot of material in between that I have to remove, and so one thing I thought would make that a little bit easier would be to get my handsaw here and cut each of those sections. That way as I go to chisel it out, I'll have a spot to relief against. Otherwise, I, I think it'll be quite a bit more of a challenge to get at those sections. Um, I did shave down these ends here just a little bit. I was at first going to start uh, shaping the rest of the piece, but then I decided that um, it's probably better that I don't just because I'm going to be putting in this in the vise, clamping it against my workbench. So I, I kind of want to leave it rough at first so that I can put as much uh, tension on this while I work on the teeth without worrying about damaging any of the designs or pattern work that I do after this point. So I'm going to be working on putting these teeth in. And it was a challenge. Um, I, I just I haven't done this style of pattern before. Uh, I'm sure for anyone that's a more seasoned woodworker, um, the patternation of this would be quite a bit more simple, but for me it was quite a bit of challenge. Not only that, but the pattern itself has a unique ridge line, and I I wasn't sure how to create that ridge line. Um, so the ridge line goes from the tip of the each of the teeth all the way towards almost halfway of the blade. Um, and then the wood kind of slopes in between the teeth and then eventually gets to the center of the tooth where it kind of disappears. I had no idea how to do that. And so to start with, I'm just making the teeth stop at that initial that initial marking that I made. Um, just because I'm, I'm kind of learning. <laughs> Um, I was a little bit nervous about doing this. What I One of the original ideas that I had was to kind of make pseudo teeth, but then actually inlay shark's teeth. Um, I thought that would look really cool, but at the same time, I really wanted to make a little bit more of a traditional styled nifo oti um, and make these teeth out of wood. I just thought it would look a lot more interesting, I'd be a little bit more true to pattern, um, and, and I wanted to also kind of challenge myself into doing something a little bit outside of my comfort zone. 
And so I've spent the next, oh geez, week, week and a half <laughs> working on this. Um, just a little bit each day, uh, I'd get to a point where I'd be uh, kind of exhausted working on the teeth and I'd go work on something else and I'd come back to it. Um, and so the first step was to kind of rough in the teeth and I did that for each one of them all the way through. So rather than finishing them completely, I'm kind of just roughing them into shape. And then once I finish roughing them into shape, I'll then turn back around and finish them off and make them a lot more clean and uniform. Uh, but even roughing it into shape like this was quite a bit of a challenge. I was really nervous. I was going to chunk out the wood. Um, I did chunk out some of the wood, but um, not so much that it caused a problem. I was able to work around it. Uh, it was just kind of an overall challenge getting this to, to work. Um, I guess I probably should have looked up how people carve these in. That would have been a better idea. <laughs> But all I would have done is self-taught, and so this kind of follows this. So I was really just looking at the photos and trying to mimic the pattern. I did get into a little bit of a groove, though, where I was starting to get more familiar with what I was doing, probably using bad uh, technique, but at least for me, it was getting faster. Each tooth, one after the other, was getting a little bit faster, a little bit faster. And then I got to the point where I was just about done with roughing in the teeth and getting to the point where I could start finishing in and making them look quite a bit nicer but it was already looking pretty awesome like I was already very happy with the way that it was turning out and very very pleased that I decided to go for this rather than uh, just in setting in some teeth and uh, shark teeth and lashing them into place that would have looked cool and I might make another piece in the future that uses shark teeth um, but for this piece I'm going to be sticking with uh, the wooden teeth. I think you'd call them teeth. Maybe spikes, wooden spikes. I'm not sure what you would call them. Um, so I've finished roughing them in. You can kind of see they're not very uniform. They're kind of rounded. They don't have good edges. And so this next step here is I'm just going to be cleaning them up, making sure that the edges flow all the way down to the back. You can see where the ridge line kind of stops on some of them and then it goes straight up and down. On those, I need to narrow them up some more. Um, and so that's just the process flow. So it just took a really long time to get through all of this. Now, what I decided to do was do each side, side at a time. And so I'm going to be doing this whole side. And then once I finish with this whole side, I'll flip the whole piece over and <laughs> start over. <laughs> Uh, and it just it took a really long time um, but I'm very excited I still have a lot of work to do on this piece uh, this is going to be part one of my Nifa Oti uh, I still have quite a bit more left uh, but I'm very excited I'm very pleased with how it's looking it is kind of a smaller Nifa Oti uh, usually these are a little bit uh, larger I'd say mine's probably oh I don't know maybe eight inches short um, compared to a normal piece. Um, the fire knives are a little bit longer, but especially like the wooden pieces, those are usually a good two, two and a half feet long. And, and my piece here is barely 18 inches, maybe a little bit longer than that. And so it just wasn't, it's not nearly as uh, large of an Ifa Oti as another piece, but um, for its size and its dimension, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, one thing that was really cool was as I was cleaning up each one of these teeth and really making those edges a lot nicer and fine, man, did it start looking pretty awesome. <laughs> and so I was, I was really excited with how it was coming. And so at this point in time, I had just about finished the teeth or at least to this point. And I really liked the way that it looked, but that's actually not quite traditional. Um, if you look at more of a traditional piece, the ridge on those teeth make it, they go back about an inch. And so if you look at the image I have here, you can, you can see how the ridge on the teeth go back on the wood and then the wood kind of slopes down. So it's not like a stop. And I, I really was struggling with that look. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I would be able to make that. I wasn't sure how that's made. Um, but I decided that I was just going to go for it. 
And so I was, I was nervous because I knew if I messed up that, uh, you know, you can't make wood grow or at least, you know, once it's cut off the tree. But I figured I would just go for it, give it a try. And so working on this first tooth, I, I kind of got a process flow, but it wasn't quite looking right. Um, it just the entire time I was just very, very, very nervous with, with making this look correct and, and more true to a traditional uh, Samoa Nifo'oti in the way that it needed to look. Um, but surely, uh, little by little, sure enough, it started to come to shape and the image I had or the image that I was referencing on my phone of a more traditional Nifo'oti started to re reflect what I was seeing here and I was super excited about that. Um, and it actually makes it look so much more interesting. Um, and you can actually see on these first two teeth here uh, where that ridge line makes its way back and then the wood slopes down. Now it's kind of hard to see from this angle. It's kind of a crappy angle. But those first two teeth compared to the rest of the teeth just look so much better. That just looks awesome. So I am absolutely in love with how this is looking. So the good news is I kind of figured it out and I, I know what I'm doing with it. The bad news is, is I need to <laughs> make this pattern all the way down on one side, flip it over, and then I need to do it again on the other side. So this is gonna take me a long time. So unfortunately, I didn't get this finished in, in time to do the entire piece in one video. It's gonna be split up into two, possibly even three videos. But let me know in the comments below uh, how you like the piece so far. If you like the more traditional look on the teeth or kind of what I originally had, almost looks like alligator teeth. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun and I'm excited to finish up this piece and then get to test it. Well, aloha and mahalo for everyone that watches.